Well, here it is. This is the algae tank. It's the 55 gallon that's attached to the 120. Um, 120 flows from the CPR and it flows into this tank which basically I set up to see what would happen um, once the 120 <clears throat> was working or running for right around three months uh, I wanted to put one 55 gallon on each side because I had two more or I had two 55 gallons and I wanted to put one on each side and kind of do this to have a remote deep sand bed slash you know macro algae tank and basically like two large refugiums on the side just to try and get that whole natural filtration down of you know top to bottom to bottom you know all gravity fed pretty much through the overflows and this is what uh, has pretty much come of it um, this is right about three months um, I started off with uh, this with the three inch bottom it's actually a little over three inches almost four <clears throat> I threw uh, some Kato Morpha in there and some Halmata. I never get that shit right. Halmata, Hamata, Tomato, Tomata. It's uh, some mangroves, some red kelp, um, some grape kelp, as it's called. And threw it all in there and just basically let it cook uh, like chili. And just let it run um, and it's kind of fun watching the battle of algaes happening in here it's really fun watching the life explode in here um, I didn't put any predatorial type uh, thing in this tank for well it's about three weeks ago is when I started throwing shit in here and it's all come from my 120 so I wanted to try and get as many free roaming crabs out of the 120 as I could, the hermits and whatnot. Because um, I don't have any kind of nuisance algae in the in the 120, so you know, besides the occasional film. But I got enough uh, miniature ceris and some astrias, uh sea rights, snail, 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 and they take care of pretty much the film. And some of the minor small nuisance that grows on there that I, I seriously I haven't seen any nuisance algae in there for uh, uh, well, at least a month I guess I mean it just seemed to uh, completely disappear I had a little bit on on the very far right side where the mushrooms are at but uh, you know I just this replaced the GFO and that stuff dissipated so you know of course there's always help of getting rid of the nuisance stuff but the main thing was to get it out of the display tank and get it going in here so this is what it's at get you a little closer look at what's going on in this crazy thing so you got your overflow it goes up in here and makes a bubbly mess which wrecks havoc on the light, a lot of salt creep. I got this coming on, it's on the uh, same plug as the, goes through the reef light when it, uh, uh, reef keeper light. That's when the lights turn on. Uh, so it's off, that is off during the time when the lights are off. So it's pretty much, you know, very calm, very low water flow through here. Pests. About three weeks ago is when I started putting predatory stuff in there. You know, sorry, snails, uh, mini serifs, these, uh, I don't remember what these are called. Strom, strombi, strombi or something like that. But, 
not sure what they are called for sure. But as you can see in the sand, I mean, you know, this is three months of, you know, basically just letting it go. Um, you can see all the the worm sign going on in here. Uh, the basic battle is over here, where I think most of the nutrients seem to be kind of, you know, the idea was for it to come in here to have it blow the nutrients over into here and circle back up and then whatever didn't get would go over in the overflow. So those mangroves were buds. They were just the pods that you get when you order them. No roots or anything. That's three months worth of root growth. Um, or the coralline algae that's on the side. That's all three months worth. Um, you can see the line break basically from the light, but um, you know, I got the tree roaming snails in here. As you can see from all the bug life, it's crazy. Craziness. Flatworm. We'll focus on that. There you go. Flatworm, you got pods, pods galore, snails, <clears throat> more crabs, put that urchin, that sea urchin in there, and there's two of them in there. I don't know where they're the ones at right now. Oh, he's back over there. Back in that corner. As you can see, it's like you got the hair slash turf algae. That's also hair algae. It's just a different thread, as you can see. And of course, my lovely friend Aptasia growing all over the damn place. But it's it's a battle, definitely a fun battle to be watching with uh, all this algae, seeing how it's fighting each other out. The good thing about it is it's eating all the nutrients. Got kelp over here. And more kelp there. As you can see this is a little bit lighter red kelp. And that is, it's just because of the light. I mean, the less light this kelp has, the redder it gets. Um, there's also, if you see the rubble, um, I got 25 pounds of just rubble rock and I put most of it in here and a few bigger pieces that came with it is in the other fuge. Um, this tank, as you can see, maybe not, is it is scratched to fuck. So is the 120, but, you know, these tanks are so many years old, it's not even funny. There's a... Let's see if you won't be camera shy. Is a Boston crab. I have a coworker who went on a trip there. Um, and daughter was out collecting shells. Put them in her suitcase, brought it home. And when she got back to Nevada, after flying on the plane from Boston, that crab was in her suitcase obviously from one of the shells that she was picking up, so they didn't know what to do with it. I just thought it was kind of cool. It's a Boston crab and ended up in my tank, and he was the first live thing that I put in here other than, you know, everything else that's growing in here. Um, I think it's, uh, it's kind of working out good. I mean life in here is silly. It's uh it's it's kind of working the way uh, I want it. I want some of uh, I want this to start losing a little bit more, which technically it is. Um, 
All these snails and stuff have been here about three weeks. Uh, all this hair algae was up and down these back walls, especially you can still see it on this back wall back here, but that was all the way up and all the way across three weeks ago. And it was as high, you can probably see this through here. I mean, it was that high. It looked like a hedge all the way across. You know, I just let it, I just let it do it. And uh, started putting all these uh, little uh, predators in here, and they started cleaning everything up, especially these urchins. These urchins are animals. Oh, no shit, they're animals, but they're algae animals. They love, I don't like them in the display. I still got one more in the 120 that I'm going to get out and put in here. Just because they're obnoxious, you know, they don't care. They knock shit over. And so do the crabs. You know, even as small as that guy is, and these hermit crabs, they're not horribly bad. That's one reason why I just want to get all the crabs and all that crud out of the main display and just have these guys, basically, these miniature Saras, which I have, I got a bag of a thousand of them. And I kind of put them in here. Um, they don't breed as much as uh, these guys. These guys fuck like rabbits, and they breed all over the place. If you'll see, like, uh, a focus on this guy. That's a baby. Um, there's a baby. There's babies all over of these things actually. There's everywhere. A lot of flatworms too. Um, there's a baby. But yeah, those things breed like crazy. So it'll self-populate this whole tank up. And just keep cleaning and keep going. Um, yeah, it's uh, craziness with the life that's going in here. You can see the lower flow. Lower flow and lower light brings your spongy spaghettis out. And, uh, but yeah, that's basically it. The mangroves haven't uh, started the leaf yet, even. You know, and this, they get plenty of light. I got.